Okay, good morning and welcome to Matins on this Saturday of the second week of Pentecost. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, the scriptures we're using today, uh, first we'll use Psalm 122, uh, and then we'll finish Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we'll also finish 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So before we begin, let's pray that God would help us to put away all our distractions and keep our focus of our minds and our hearts on Him. Would you please pray with me? Bless us, O God, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our mind and spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, give us the peace of the new Jerusalem. Bring all nations into your kingdom to share your gifts, that they may render thanks to you without end, and may come to your eternal city, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> okay. So our first lesson, Deuteronomy chapter 5, we begin at verse 23. Moses is speaking to the people. And as soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness... While the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness. Pardon me. His glory and greatness. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, we shall die. <coughs> Pardon me. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of fire as we have and has still lived? Go near and hear all that the Lord our God will say and speak to us all that the Lord our God will speak to you and we will hear and do it. And the Lord heard your words when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard the words of this people, which they have spoken to you. 
They are right in all that they have spoken. Oh, that they had such a mind as this always, to fear me and to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and with their descendants forever. Go and say to them, Return to your tents. But you stand here by me, and I will tell you the whole commandment and the statutes and the rules that you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land that I am giving them to possess. You shall be careful, therefore, to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land that you shall possess. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> New Testament reading is from Second Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and chapter 5. We're going to read starting at verse 13 of chapter 4. St. Paul writes, Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he, for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
pardon me. Ah. Let us pray. Lord God, you who are the source of all truth, wisdom, justice, and love, lead us through this time of worship and throughout this day of service to you. Help us constantly to rest our lives upon the eternal foundations of your love and presence. Save us from haste and confusion, from wrongful desire and the net of evil. Through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, enlighten, instruct, and guide us all the day long. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sorry, excuse me for a second. Apologies. Allergies are in high gear today. Okay. <clears throat> holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Every day will I praise you and praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave and crowns me with mercy and loving kindness. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> so yesterday, we had a review of, or Moses rather, reviewed how God gave them the Ten Commandments and how they heard God's voice. Um, prior to that, it was, there is no other God. The Lord alone is God, actually, was the title of that section. This is the only God who has done such a thing for a people. 
soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you people came near me, Moses, all the heads of the tribes and elders, and here's what you said. He's reminding them what they said when they received all this, this law from, from the God who brought them out of Egypt. Behold, the Lord your God, our God, has shown us his glory and greatness. We've heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we've seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now, therefore, why should we die? Okay. So, they thought they would die at hearing God's voice. That's what they thought. But in this particular transaction that Moses is recounting, it took place actually in Exodus 20, nobody actually died. God the Father is shown forth through all these operations. The Spirit is indeed working, and the Son is ministering while the Father was approving, and man's salvation being accomplished. That's from the church father Irenaeus. So as Moses is re retelling this story, um, now therefore why should we die? This, for this great fire will consume us. If we heard the voice of the Lord our God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and still lived? It shouldn't have happened. They should have died is what they're saying, and they acknowledge that. But as Moses is recounting those events, he recalls the fear expressed by the previous Israelite generation. God had brought them to Mount Sinai to exterminate them. But Moses served as the intermediary between God and his people. Hmm. So he, re he reminds them that they told him, You, Moses, go near and hear all that the Lord our God will say and speak to us. All that the Lord our God will speak to you and we will hear and do it. That's what they told Moses. Okay, you're our intermediary. You go and speak to God on our behalf. And whatever he says, come back and tell us and we'll do it. That's what they said. They made a promise to Moses and to God. And he tells them, And the Lord heard your words when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I've heard the words of this people which they spoke to you. They are right in all that they've spoken. God himself approved the Israelite nation's request for Moses to serve as an intermediary. He liked that. He wanted Moses to, to fulfill that role. And here's the key verse, I think. Verse 29. Oh, that they had such a mind as this always, to fear me and to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and with their descendants forever. If the people of God always feared him and kept his commandments, creation would be full of bliss, basically, is what God is saying here. It would go well with them, and it would go well with their children and their children's children, and it would continue to go well so long as they feared God and kept his commandments. Go and say to them, Return to your tents. But you stand here by me, and I will tell you the whole commandment and the statutes and the rules that you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land that I am giving them to possess. So God says, I'm going to keep using you, Moses. All of God's statutes and commands were shared exclusively with Moses, and Moses then taught these regulations to God's people. That's the 613 laws. Okay? The people heard the ten, which are hard enough to keep, but, but God gave Moses the other 600 plus, and only to Moses, and then Moses had to teach the people. So in his infinite wisdom, God commended the Israelites' request for a mediator and for their fear and reverence toward him. This is how it's supposed to work. And so when they made a wise and holy requests 
you might even say an inspired request. God honored it, honored it and rewarded it. All right. So in this chapter, Moses recounts how all of the Israelites assembled at Mount Sinai to hear God present guidelines guidelines for a holy relationship with him and with one another. Sinful men and women need an inter intermediary between themselves and God. Although Moses served in that capacity at Mount Sinai, Jesus Christ fills that role in a much greater way for you and me. Yes, he certainly does. They needed one then, but the people need one always. And Moses could only do it for so long. Hmm. So Moses had a big responsibility to teach them. And if they'd kept it, if they'd listened to the teaching, it would have been a lot better. But we're sinful. We're a sinful people. Okay, so 2 Corinthians, um, starting at verse 13 of chapter 4. And I think, let me just look real fast. Yeah, we had a lot of this last Sunday. I hope you recognize that. Although we stopped at chapter 5, verse 1 on Sunday. This one all the way to verse 10, right? I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. That's the good news. That's a, a different summary of the good news, but that's ultimately what it's saying. When we say we believe in the resurrection, which we which we confessed in the creed, right? The resurrection of the body, at the last day, we will all be resurrected. We will all be resurrected, and we will be brought in front of the judge. Christ will cover us, baptized believers, will cover us with his righteousness, and we will enter into eternal life with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's the plan. That's the plan that we were given a preview of. And that's what Paul is telling the church in Corinth here. It's all for your sake. So that as grace extends to more and more people, it, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we can say, I know what my eternity is going to be. Thank you, God, for making that possible. Thank you, Christ, for dying for me so that I can have that eternity. And we can share it. And more people can realize the gift that God wants to give them. And when they realize it, they can be thankful, and that will glorify God. So we do not lose heart. And we have this, our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed. All right? The outer self is all that belongs to this sinful world, and it's passing away. The inner self, the new person, right, who will live forever in God's presence, being renewed day by day, well, how so? Through the Word? The sacraments, they give strength for each day of our lives. And they prompt us to daily repentance. Confessing the sins that we are seemingly powerless to, to fight off. For we know, uh, well, hold on. This light momentary affliction, like how he calls our... our earthly lifetimes momentary, preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Beyond all comparison. Eternal. As we look to the things, not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. You can't see faith. You can't see grace, forgiveness. You can see this tent that is wasting away though right 
we know, let's see, the things that are seen are transient. This body will die. The things that are unseen are eternal. Can't see my soul, my spirit. Can't see um, God's love. Right? The things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, and one day it will be, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That is also our resurrected body. Our resurrected body will be eternal. It will not die. Okay? In this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. That's where we long to be. That's where we hope to be. Where there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. God will wipe away all tears from their eyes, right? That's how Revelation describes when God has brought everything to completion. When it's all done, right? That's where we long to be. We long to put on, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on, we may not be found naked. All right. So, I had a long chat with uh, <coughs> with my my comrades about this, about what it means to be, what he means by naked here. Um. Not the same kind of naked as being hidden in the garden, right? Hiding in the garden out of shame because they discovered they didn't have clothes on. While we're in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Okay. Paul does not wish to do away with his temporal existence here, for God has his purposes for all things. Rather, Paul earnestly prays that God would swallow up his mortality with Christ-like immortality in his time. Okay? Resurrected body. That's what we're talking about here. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who's given us the Spirit as a guarantee. That's part of... Remember... Um, Bef right before he ascended, Jesus said, I'm, I'm leaving now, but you will not be alone. I'm sending you another helper, a comforter, a paraclete. That's the Holy Spirit. So we're always of good courage. We know this because the Spirit reminds us and refreshes us and renews us each day through the Word and the sacraments. That's how the Spirit works. We know that while we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. Body. Right, we're, That means we, we're not with God in eternity yet. We want to be there, but we walk by faith, not by sight. That's back to that, the things that are seen are transient. The things that are unseen are eternal. We look to the eternal things, the things that are going to be, uh, that we won't have or encounter until after Judgment Day. Right? Yes, we're of good courage. We would rather, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. It's not where we are yet. We're not there. But whether we're at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. We do that not to earn anything, but simply out of response and thanksgiving for what He's already done. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's going to happen so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Hmm. And he's not done there. But it's the next part that he's going to explain what happens next. So, all right. I can actually finish on time today. That's a good place to stop. Would you please pray with me? Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom which comes down from heaven that your word may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people. 
that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name may abide to the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Okay. That concludes our matins for this Saturday. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for spending this time in the Word with me. Thank you for giving back to God a little bit of the day he's given to you. Um, tomorrow's Sunday, uh, so I will look forward to seeing some of you there. Um, those that can't make it, I hope you can join us online. Um, and then we'll get back to this again on Monday. So until we can be together again, whenever that is, may God bless and keep you. <laughs>